three minutes. It's close. Two for one. It's just the enemy down. Triple down. What can stop you if you fight together? Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we've got a versus battle for the centuries. And this one just so happens to be the Ganora's Axe versus the Chaperone, one of which is legendary and one of which is exotic. Now, the whole goal behind this entire video is to find out as to whether or not the Ganora's Axe is a mini chaperone. And if that's the case, then maybe is it going to be better or worse than the chaperone? That's precisely what we want to find out. Now, you might be asking yourselves, all right, well, this sounds great, but how exactly are we going to determine this? That, my friends, is a phenomenal question. And the way in which we're doing this is by looking at the weapon's base stats, its TTK stats, its overall range factors, its bullet magnetism, the chaperone's perks versus the Gnora's perks, and find out as to what kind of role that we really need in order to be able to compete with the chaperone and make the Gnora's ever so slightly better or a mini version of it. The only thing we have to do is to eviscerate that notification button and let's jump right into the video. Before we go any further, I just want to mention one thing very, very briefly, and that is that I am not, I repeat, not looking at the good bone structure shotgun, even though it's almost identical and in the exact same art type as the Ganora Zax. The reason why we're not looking at it is because, simply put, the good bone structure's base stats simply don't compare to that of the Ganora's as it's superb in many, many ways. But not just this, the Ganora's Axe's pull perk is much, much better than that of the good bone structure, and thus you have a much better chance to actually get a weapon or a roll on the Ganora's Axe that's then going to compete and become a mini chaperone. Understanding that, the very next thing that I want to look at is the weapon's TTK stats and how they compare in one to the next. But before we can even get into that, you guys have really got to understand as to what exactly makes the chaperone exotic and the role that I happen to be testing all this stuff on with my Ganora's X. As you guys can see from right here, the chaperone has five perks. Hand Light Stock, the Roadborn, Accurized Rounds, Hammer Forge Rifling, and Precision Slug. But the one that you really have to pay attention to here is the Roadborn. And that perk states that precision kills briefly grant bonus handling, range, and precision damage with this weapon. How this Roadborn perk, along with Accurized Rounds and Hammer Force Rifling, is really going to come into play is what we're going to get into in just a couple of minutes. But before I do so, you've got to understand my role on the Gnora's X. And as you guys can tell from right here, this thing happens to have Snapshot Sights, Auto Loading Holster, Accurized Rounds, Extended Barrel, an Icarus Mod, and a Handling Masterwork. As far as the weapon's other perks go, well, that pretty much covers it. But I do have to mention here that the Chaperone is absolutely notorious for being despicable with in-air accuracy. But on the other hand, the Ganora's Axe has some beautiful, glorious, and out-of-this-world in-air accuracy that just can't be found unless you happen to have an Icarus mod. And that's exactly what this thing has and what you've been seeing throughout this entire game footage thus far. I can certainly say that using this Ganora's Axe with an Icarus mod is going to kind of be like you, but on Chucky steroids because this thing's going to be coming out of nowhere with that machete, slashing, knife, and everything. But in this case, it's going to be from the air, and before they even know it, surprise, Chucky gotcha. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, Xander, what the heck are you thinking? This thing is definitely not a god roll. And to you, I say, you are 110% correct. It's not a god roll, as there is a ton of other perks out there that can have some really great synergy and make this thing even more powerful. But even so, with this kind of roll, it can still compete with the Chaperone, at least in terms of the weapon's range, and certainly its lethality, and we're going to see all this in just a couple of minutes. But before I do so, you guys have really got to take one step back and remember what I said from earlier about that Roborn perk on the Chaperone and how it can increase the weapon's overall damage. Luckily for us, I've done all those values and done those computations right there on screen. In this fantastic little chart, and the most notable thing about all of this stuff is that the Gnora's Axe is always going to do 258 points of damage in the head if it doesn't happen to have any other kind of damage buffing perks, while as a Chaperone and its base damage is always going to be 247, but when it happens to have Roborn proct, that's when it's going to do 288 points of damage in the head. Another notable thing that I think that you guys are going to find quite interesting is that with the Gnora's Axe, its body shot damage is always 147. 
but with a chaperone, regardless of whether or not it happens to have Roborn proct or it doesn't, is always going to be at 134. And so in this sense, the Kenora's Axe does have a slight edge over the chaperone. In contrast to this, the chaperone does have a slightly faster body shot time to kill at 0.83 seconds in comparison to the Ganora's Axe at 0.9, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that 0.07 second body shot time to kill difference is gonna be almost negligible and you're never really going to notice this, and so in essence, these two things are the same. In comprehending all that information, the very next question that I want you guys to ask yourselves is how does the Ganora's Axe compare to the chaperone in terms of the weapon's range, but not just this, more importantly, is the bullet magnetism. Remember that a weapon's overall effective range determines as to how much that a bullet can still miss and then quote unquote curve to still land against that guardian, and this is what's then inferred as bullet magnetism. And the way in which we can see these two things the best, or at least that's what you would think anyway, is by looking at the weapon's base stats. And as you guys can see from right there, we had the Gnora's Axe's base stats on the left and the Chaperone's base stats on the right. The thing that instantly stands off the page is the fact that the Chaperone has a base range factor, according to Light.GG, at 100 out of 100. But not just this, it has an additional 20 base range due to the weapon's perks of Accurized Rounds and Hammer Force Rifling. Now I'll come back to that range stat on the Gnora's and the Chaperone in just a couple of seconds. But before I do so, I just want you guys to know that the stability on the Ganoras is much, much greater than that of the Chaperone, but the handling on the Chaperone is much, much greater on the Ganoras, and last but not least, the aim assistance on the Chaperone is much greater than that of the Ganoras at 70 in contrast to 34. As far as everything else goes, you really don't gotta worry about that because they're almost even across the board. And so now I wanna go back to range and explain this even more so on the Chaperone and the Ganoras. Understand that the chaperone's range is automatically at a base of 100, and so that additional plus 20 is not, I repeat, not going to stack on the weapon's overall effective range. But what it will make a difference on, or at least that's what I believe and we're going to find out in private matches, is the weapon's bullet magnetism. And the same thing can also be said for the Ganoras, because even though it has an additional plus 20 from the perks that I happen to have of accurized rounds and extended barrel, that's then going to affect the bullet magnetism just the same. In addition to this, that additional plus 20 on the Ganoras is going to affect the weapon's overall one-shot kill distance, but with the Chaperone, that's not going to be the case, as once again, it's capped out at 100. And digesting all that data, the very next thing we have got to do is test each one of these two weapons in private matches for each of their effective ranges, as well as for each of their bullet magnetisms at those respective ranges. As we go into that private match, first up is the Ganoras X and determining as to how much that this thing and the rule that I happen to have has for an effective range. And so in doing this at 10, 11, and 12 meters, I then discovered that the weapon's effective range is at 11 meters. But to you, I also want you to note that this does not mean that this is the weapon's effective range. It only means that that's the effective range on my roll that I happen to have. You might get perks like opening shot, slide shot, swashbuckler, or rampage, all of which can effectively increase the weapon's range in one matter or the next. As far as those perks go, I'll get into all those in just a couple of minutes later in the video. But for right now, what I want to cover next is the Chaperone's max range. And so in doing a couple more tests at say 12, 13, and 14 meters, I then discovered that the Chaperone's maximum effective range on that first kill is at 13 meters. But remember that this weapon happens to have that perk known as Roadborne and that when brought is actually going to give you an even greater effective range. And so I did this at 14, 15, and 16 meters, and then discovered that it didn't quite one-shot Guardians at 16 meters, but what I did do is at 15 meters, it was still able to one-shot when Roborn was active. Now that you guys kind of understand as to how these two things compare in terms of their base range factors, the very next thing that we got to test is the weapon's bullet magnetism. And the way in which I'm doing this is going around, say, 10 meters or so, give or take a couple half a meter, and then actually seeing as to how much that these things can still miss and still actually land their shots on any given target. With the Ganora's X, I did this three times on the right-hand side of the head and three times on the top of the head. And just to kind of see as to how much that I can miss or still land a shot, as I went out further and further for both of these three test cases on each side of the head, it really was mind-boggling that I was able to miss by that much of a margin of error and still be able to land given shots with the perks that I happen to have. 
Now I did this exact same thing, or at least as best as I could, with these three same tests on the chaperone instead. And once again, I used the sight as kind of my measuring tools, just like I did with uh, the Gonora X. And so what I found with this one is that there was a minute of minuscule changes, at least in terms of the weapon's bullet magnetism, for both the right-hand side of the head and the top of the head. In seeing all these types of tests in private matches, there's two things that I want you all to take away from this. Number one, it doesn't matter as to whether or not you're using the Chaperone or the Gonora's Axe, as each one of these two things almost has identical bullet magnetism as long as the weapon's base range on the Gonora's is at around 90 or so, and that of course the Chaperone you can't change, so that is what it is. Number two, what I will say is the key defining moment and factor between each one of these two weapons, as well as their overall effectiveness, is their one-shot kill range. And that, of course, is going to be given up by the Chaperone, but also keep in mind that you might get a wide variety of different perks that are going to increase the Gnora's Axe's one-shot range, and let me explain exactly how that could be done. As you guys can see from right there on screen, we have a ton of perks all highlighted in red. And those are the perks that I would recommend that you try and look for on the Gnora's X. But let me break this down column by column, starting off with that very first column. Here we happen to have Corsica Rifling, Extended Barrel, Full Bore, Hammer Force Rifling, and Small Bore, followed by the second column of perks, and that's then going to be Assault Mag, Accurized Rounds, and Light Mag. Following that, we got Full Auto and Quick Draw in the third column. And last but not least, we happen to have Rampage, Moving Target, Slide Shot, Opening Shot, and Swashbuckler. Essentially what this breaks down to is that in that first and second column, you're really looking for perks that are going to increase the weapon's overall effective range, and that's its base range values. But as far as that third and fourth column goes, these two columns are also trying to increase the weapon's overall effective range, but they're doing it via damage perks, as well as potentially being able to increase the weapon's overall utility by having something like, say, drawing the weapon faster or increasing the weapon's rate of fire. For example, Let's just say that you're a shoulder charging titan who's going to be doing that all over the place. And so a great role for you might be Swashbuckler, Full Auto, Assault Mag, and Full Bore. That's then going to entail that when you get that shoulder charge, you're going to have Swashbuckler times 5 doing massive amounts of damage on the enemy guardian when you happen to get that critical headshot. But not just this, you also have Full Auto and Assault Mag mean that you're going to be able to fire the weapon much, much faster, and so if you happen to get two body shots, it's going to be even quicker than the 0.9 seconds that this thing already has as a base body shot value. When you incorporate full bore on top of this, that's when the weapon's base range is going to be increased by plus 15, and the weapon's going to be that much more lethal. However, a second role that you might want to look for is opening shots, quick draw, accurate rounds, and hammer forge rifling. As with that kind of role, the weapon's base range is going to be exceptional at 90 out of 100. But not just this, the weapon's also going to have a greater increase in range due to opening shot, as that perk is going to increase the weapon's base range with that shot, but also accuracy at the same time. This might actually increase the weapon's effective range to be something like, say, 12 meters, and that's only 1 meter short of the chaperone. For those of you that play very, very aggressively, like myself, Having on something like Quick Draw is going to be ideal for you as well, as that's then going to allow you to swap the weapon very, very quickly and get those oh-so-juicy, oh-so-crispy, and oh-so-so-spicy headshots that much more often. All in all, I think it's a fair assessment to say that if you happen to get the right roll, and even with a roll like the one that I have, which is certainly not a god roll, this Gnora's Axe is definitely a mini chaperone and also going to make enemy guardians a little bit salty. Is it actually better than the chaperone itself? Well, my friends, I'll leave that up to you. But one thing that I will leave you with is that the Gnora's Axe is a legendary weapon, and it can get very, very similar results as the chaperone can, but the chaperone is an exotic weapon. And so keeping that in mind, let me know what you guys think about that kind of comparison analysis down in the comment section below. Which one you think is better than the other? Are they equal? Are they worse? All that kind of jazz, and I can't wait to see as to exactly what you guys got to say. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media because you are the greatest. That's pretty much all I've got for you as of right now, DS Layers. And as always, GG TNT.